Ah. I've come looking for work. I, uh, I attended the college. That ward is struck. And once a ward or a house is struck, then all the people there in are quarantined for 40 days. Both sick and well? Both together. What happens? We leave them. Mostly, they die. What about the physicians? All fled. Physicians have become the men most despised. Don't you like that, sir? Physicians used to wear them to purify the air against the plague. Well, you could keep it. The physician who wore it comes here no more. Nor does he go anywhere. Nor has breath. <laughs> I write this for you, dear Margaret, to tell you something of my life. Whatever is goodness I owe to two people whom I could not save. Your mother loved you and gave her life for yours. She was the bravest spirit I ever knew. The most compassionate was my friend, John Pierce. Now I know I must return to our work in the hospital and take on the role that was always meant for me. I have arranged for your safekeeping, for if I become ill, I will not return. Tied to the bed. I was already affected with the plague a tide to prevent them going to the streets like madmen and infecting other people. But the sick and the well must be separated. Open it. Get up, sir. Proclamation. The plague. And I shall open it. together. If I were merely to separate them, a great many lives would be saved. Who do I have to thank for this kindness? One John Pierce. The sick I can offer no cure, but my presence among them may bring with it some hope. Fear is our greatest enemy, and hope our best weapon against the disease. mistaken me for John Pierce, a mistake to which I have contributed. I allow them to continue to honor my friend.
give her into your hands. Call for any medicines, anything you deem suitable. They sent another doctor to me. You must want to live, Lady Celia. No. Not in so wretched a state. <sighs> Tell me, Doctor. Why is it that those that we love do not love us in return? I once loved a woman who did not love me. Yet I believe that she did. Is it not equally possible to mistakenly feel unloved? I am one of many. I know no special place in the king's heart. The king does love you, Lady Seal. Why would he reveal such intimacies to you and not to me? told me nothing, but I recognized in him the very feelings I myself had found. How may I arrive at such an understanding? I used to look to the constellations for some explanation of the mysterious turns of my own life. But the stars hold only part of the answer, Lady Celia. Now I look toward myself and those who believed in me and loved me for the man I was. Now I know we have the power to shape our own destiny. Your voice sounds familiar. Perhaps from some other time in my life when I was a child. Yes. Perhaps when we were children. Sire, I am familiar with the many symptoms of the plague. Lady Celia suffers from a different illness, a fever, which I have treated and from which she will recover. And something else, she is with child. Good doctor. You have made my heart exceeding glad. But she is still haunted by a profound melancholy. It can be relieved only by some assurance of love. I do believe I understand you. I believe I do. And now you must remove your headdress and uh, make yourself known to us. That, if your majesty will forgive me, I cannot do. I only hope I have proved useful.